Hello everybody, today I'll be showing you how to write a program to solve a system of three equations with three variables in your graphing calculator. This will also be able to solve a system of two equations with two variables as well. Alright, so to get started, create a new program. I name mine System. And go ahead and start by clearing our home screen. And uh, next we're going to clear a couple variables, uh, our lists. If you have any data stored in those lists, uh, just take note and use some other lists. But we're going to use the first five lists here, so we want to reset them so that the data in them, if there is any, doesn't interfere with anything that we're doing. Alright, so go press STAT and go down to clear lists. And now we're just going to list off the lists that we're going to use. List 1, list 2, list 3, list 4, and list 5. Alright, so after that, after we've done that, uh, we're ready to start getting the input. Now the input has to be in the format ax plus by plus cz equals d. Notice that the constant is on the right side of the equation and the uh, variables and coefficients of those variables are on the right side, the left side of the equation, sorry. Uh, so uh, just so that the user knows that, we're going to remind them of that format by displaying it on the screen using display. Alright, so go ahead and type in display. We're going to want to display ax plus by plus cz. Second math for equals equals d. Alright, and now we're going to want to tell the user that we're ready for the first equation. So go ahead and display equation 1. Alright, so now that we have that all set up, we can go ahead and prompt the user for the four variables. A, B, C, and D. So go over to prompt. A, B, comma, C, comma, D. All on one line. Alright, so after we've done that, we're going to take these four variables and we're going to put them each in, in a different list. Alright, and then we're going to, uh, and then we're going to take equation two and we're going to add it to the list. All right, and then we're going to take equation 3 and add that to the list. So to do this, the first one is going to be a little different. We're going to represent the uh, variable as a sequence, and then we're going to set that sequence equal to the list. So it's going to represent the entire list. It's uh, different when we have when we want to add something to it. So go ahead and uh, represent A as a, put A in a sequence. So um, get some curly brackets, second parenthesis put A inside, and then quite simply we're just going to set that equal to L1. We're going to store that in L1. Alright, so we're going to go down the line here, go B in list 2, C in list 3, and D in list 4. Alright, so now we have that taken care of, the first equation is all set. Let's go ahead and get that clutter off the screen. And then tell the user we're ready for equation 2. So, display equation 2. Just in case he forgot what comes after 1. Or how to spell equation. I-O-N. Equation 2. Alright, so now we have to prompt for our variables again. Notice that we're going to use the same variables A, B, C, and D because we've already taken the data and uh, copied it to our list so we can e reuse the variables A, B, C, and D. Alright, once we have that done, we're going to want to take A and add it to the list. But if we do the same manner we did last time, it's just going to overwrite the previous data that we've already had in there. So, we are going to take A we're going to store it to list 1, but we're going to specify what uh, what element we're uh, going to put in. So to specify the second uh, element in list 1, we're going to take 1 plus the current dimensions of list 1. And we do that by going to second stat for list, ops, over to ops, and dimensions of list one. So that's going to, the current dimensions of list 1, when it reaches this point, is going to be 1, because we've only stored one uh, point in, in list 1. 
So 1 plus 1 equals 2. Yes. So we're going to store a in the second element of list 1. Look at that. Quite simple. And now we're going to do the same thing with b, only with list 2. So 1 plus the dimensions of list 2. All right, so now we're just going to go through and finish equation 2, and then we're going to clear the home screen again, display equation 3, and then do the same exact thing after we've prompted for the variables. We're going to do the same exact thing for the third equation. All right, so go ahead and do that. Sweet. So now your uh, program should look like this once you have equation 2 and all the variables stored in the list, added to the list. All right, and then you have equation 3 and all the prompt for the variables, and then them all added to the list. So now we have all of our data points stored in our lists. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to take the data stored in these lists and put it into a matrix. So then we can reduce row echelon form that matrix and get our answer. All right, so to start, we're going to take, uh, we're going to use matrix J, uh, just because you're least likely to have data stored in that. So we're going to go ahead and delete variable J. It's over here. Delete variable J. And, uh, matrix J is matrix. There we are. J. And now we're going to want to go take our list and put it in this matrix. So that is second stat again to lists, ops. And down at the bottom we have this list arrow matrix. Alright? List to matrix. <laughs> and now the uh, arguments for this are going to be our four lists, which are each going to be represented as their own column. So take list one, comma, list two, comma, list three, comma, list four, and now our destination matrix which is going to be matrix D. I mean, no, matrix J. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so now all our data is stored in matrix J. And now we can perform the operation RREF, reduced row echelon form. So go back to matrix, or a little math. Down at the bottom here we have RREF, reduced row echelon form. And do the argument is B, I mean J. <laughs> Gosh darn it. And then store it again as itself. So don't waste any other very, uh, matrices. Store it as J. And now we want to get our answer out of that and put it back into a list. So go back to second stat. Down at the bottom, and we can go matrix to list in the other direction. Our first argument is going to be the matrix. So put in matrix J. Our next argument is going to be the column that we want to extract, with it, which is column, fourth column. And then the last one is going to be our destination list, which is going to be our last uh, list that we cleared, list 5. So go ahead and put that there. And now we want to display our answer that we have put in list 5. So quite simply, display list 5. But uh, just in case you have any rational answers, uh, th so you can see all three of your answers, or all two, um, go ahead and round. We're going to want to round our answers in list 5. So to do that, we're going to go math over to number round. First argument, we are going to round list 5 to two decimal places. All right. So now that we've done that, we can clean this up a little bit by deleting some variables. So go back to stat, down to clear lists. So clear all of our lists, all the lists that we've used. Uh, delete the variable matrix J. All right. So after we've uh, deleted that variable, we can go ahead and pause so the answer doesn't run away from us. So go ahead and pause and then the unnecessary stop just because. All right, so that's all the programming. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so go down to system, execute, and here we have it, equation one. Let's enter in the, this example here, one, negative. 
negative 3, 3, negative 4, equation 2, 2, 3, negative 1, and 15, and 4, negative 3, negative 1, and 19. Hooray! It works. That is absolutely fantastic. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to uh, give me a like or a comment if you have any questions or anything at all. Um, thanks for watching.